Jeff Teela here, and today we're making spicy basil beef stir fry. It is that quintessential Thai dish that's spicy and savory and has the smell of Thai basil. It's delicious and it's easy, so let's get into it. So let's get started with some knife work. I'm a believer in mise en place, and all that really means is get all your components prepped out, measured, ready to go, so by the time you're in the wok, um, it's a simple, smooth process, all right? So veggies-wise, uh, chilies. These are serrano chilies, and all I'm gonna do is slice them really thin. And I'm all about slicing things on the bias, which means just a little angle, not that perpendicular cut that makes perfect coins, because it's boring and it doesn't really look cool. So just a little bias slice. So note on cutting chilies, that capsaicin oil, the stuff that makes the chili spicy, it tends to stick on things. So, you know, make sure you're, you're constantly like washing your hands and wiping your blades. And definitely, I'm a big believer in washing hands and wiping down utensils so you don't accidentally kind of like do one of these and go, oh my God. So now it's time for garlic. I cut garlic the same way all the time. I find the root side of the garlic and I just cut that little tile right off, okay? And the cloves are literally hanging on by just that root. So once you get the root, you can kind of neatly just kind of take what you want. Take your knife, flat lean it on that piece of garlic and just press, it doesn't take a lot of pressure. My workflow in the kitchen is doing the same thing in an assembly line over and over. So I won't like smash and then peel each clove, I'll smash and then I'll come through and peel because it makes you a lot more efficient in the kitchen. And you know, getting better at cooking is all about repetition. So if you kind of start to get into habits of doing things a certain way, you get a lot faster. So this way now, all I'm doing is peeling. This is also a good technique where you could just take all these garlic cloves and stick them in a zippy bag or in a container and, and they're kind of there for you anytime you need it. I only need four for this recipe but you can always feel free to get ahead. Once the garlic is in this state, let's give it a bigger smash. And then fingertips always curled under, thumb never protruding behind those fingers and just give it a nice thin slicing pass. If you are a person that buys peeled garlic, no judgment. If you're a person that buys minced peeled garlic, just a little judgment. It's not that hard. Also, it's a really good skill builder. So get into the habit of chopping your own garlic. Next, bell peppers and onions. Uh, let's do bell peppers first. Also another fun item to practice on to build your skill. I always talk about the guide hand, but let's talk about the knife hand. I like to hold my knife in a pinch grip. Take your thumb and your index finger like you're making an okay and your thumb and your index are really holding the blade. You wrap your three remaining fingers on the handle and that's the way to hold the knife. It becomes a perfect extension of one's arm. So here we go, tile off the back, tile off the front, pop off that stem and then uh, the old rolly cut. So let's start a tile but not push all the way through. Flat cut, roll, flat cut, roll. And there we go. So in a few motions, we have seedless piece of bell pepper. So the Jet Tila knife rhyme. Tile becomes a slice, slice becomes a dice. I always make uh, kind of tiles of everything before I cut it. If you're one of those people that loves like that fine dining look and you don't like the pith of the bell pepper, you could actually go ahead and cut the pith off here. So back in the day when I was a kid in a French kitchen, they made us cut these perfect little brunoise and that means eighth inch by eighth inch square. I'm not gonna make you crazy like they made me crazy. Uh, for this dish, I just want what we call batonets or, or slices, quarter inch slices. That's a batonet. That's just a fancy way of saying quarter inch slice. Now, of course, the uh, tops and the bottoms of the bell peppers, they are not rectangles. Um, so, but you know what? It's, I'm still gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna take a tile into a slice 
And another way you can hide the shape, if you're really kind of one of those symmetrical, everything has got to be perfect people, you can actually take these and cut them in a perpendicular and make some garnish for the end. But I like these. I like that kind of rustic look. Looks like I'm hanging out in Bangkok and wanting to get a big old bowl of um, a spicy basil stir fry. Onion. Finally, with onion, find that root side. I just want you to shave off and square off the root side, just like that. And then I want you to do the same thing to the top side. And then cut the onion in half, north pole to south pole. All right, now you peel your onions. Uh, I want you to peel your onions in the halves. It makes your life a lot easier. And remember, my workflow is do the same motion. Do one motion at a time. So let's dice an onion, shall we? I take my knuckles off the board and check it out. I just want to go through that onion, not all the way through. It's quarter inch slices that way, now quarter inch this way. And I'll do the same thing over here, remember workflow. So I'm not going all the way through. Now I'm going to go this way. And I'm using the root side of the onion to keep it all together. And then finally, quarter inch. So if you go quarter inch, quarter inch, quarter inch, you get these perfect dices every time. Uh, yeah, you know, it looks hard, but seriously, with a little bit of practice, knife work is one of my kind of the most rewarding things. It's a lot of fun to cut things and really kind of work on cutting things well. So that's my mise en place. Uh, I've got Thai basil here, but I'm just going to literally pick the leaves right off the stem because I think there's more flavor that way. And there it is. My mise en place is done. I'm a huge believer in not dirtying the kitchen and pulling a thousand bowls. I like big cutting boards or big plates and just kind of mise en place your stuff close to the wok so I can make that really quick transition. Uh, let's make some sauce, shall we? This is a phenomenal dish for Thai cooking because it's teaching you all your critical must-haves in your Thai pantry. Let's start with this one. This chili paste is packed in soybean oil. All it is, friends, is roasted shallots and garlic and roasted shrimp smashed into a paste. It has very little spice, it has very little chili. So it's basically um, a sweet umami savoriness. It is a phenomenal sauce. And, and don't let the word chili scare you. It's not very spicy at all. It's completely savory and has a delicious flavor. You could put it on toast and make shrimp toast with it, right, if you minced up some shrimp. Really simple. Uh, oyster sauce. Oyster sauce is the most commonly used sauce in the Chinese stir-fry kitchen. It's not soy sauce. This sauce has, again, every flavor you want in it. The savoriness, the saltiness. You know how you eat um, stir-fried vegetables like bok choy or Chinese broccoli from the Chinese restaurant, they're using oyster sauce. They're not using soy sauce, believe it or not. For Thailand sake, for the saltiness, we're using fish sauce. And fish sauce should always be amber in color in a fresh bottle. See how it's slightly translucent and brown and amber? That's a fresh bottle of fish sauce. Once it starts to oxidize and turns opaque, that's when it's time to get rid of it and find a new bottle. It's like two bucks. You can buy a new bottle. So you know that bottle that's been in your fridge for a year? Let's just get rid of it and start over, okay? Um, sweet soy sauce. Watch the pour. That is not just soy sauce. That is about 70% molasses, about 30% soy sauce. So it is sweet way more than it's salty. Because of its viscosity, it is a phenomenal sauce to create like a nice thick glaze without making food too salty. Now you're like, yo, Jet, I like shrimp basil or I like chicken basil. Um, I like tofu basil. That's all good. The technique is exactly the same. So the only thing you're gonna change is your protein. All right, so before we actually cook up the beef, my favorite way to eat this dish is with a fried egg on top of it. So let me show you how to do a uh, Thai-style basted egg. All right, so let's get that wok hot. This is kind of that foamy, bubbly egg on the outside that with the runny yolk. This is how we do it in the Thai kitchen. I'm starting with a wok here. I don't want you to obsess over kneading a wok. I mean, unless you're a gearhead like my wife, Allie, she needs like the right tool for each job, then by all means, buy a nice little carbon steel wok. But this can be accomplished with just about any skillet in your house. With a decent amount of oil, and I'm looking for the oil just to start smoking, and that's what I've got there. Crack your egg on a flat surface so you can bring it in and do a nice open. 
Now watch, I'm gonna shake the egg so it doesn't stick to the pan, and I'm just gonna base the oil on it. And if your, oil, if your oil is starting to smoke pretty aggressively, feel free to turn the heat down. You just needed that initial pop of hot oil to get the egg from sticking to the bottom. And I'm rotating while I'm basting the hot oil onto the egg. All basting means is taking the hot oil and ladling it over because I wanna cook the top of the egg with that hot oil whilst the bottom of the egg is getting love from the bottom of the wok. So as you can see, the white is starting to cover over because it's absorbing all that deliciousness. And I've turned off the heat because I know my, uh, my egg is close and I'm just gonna get a paper towel and rest this egg on a small plate. Using that spoon, I'm going to kind of push it off the oil so I'm not absorbing too much oil and just lay this on a plate. If you're trying to make a ton of these, do them all at once, lay them on, on, on a sheet that's lined and then you can actually top. Let's say you're making uh, this dish for four, make four eggs, top them, make five, so you have one extra for yourself. I call that the chef's treat. So there you go, basted egg. Uh, so since I'm gonna make a family style platter, I'm gonna make one more egg because they're usually fought over and I'm gonna make sure I get one for myself. Crack that egg on a flat surface and then open it nice and gently. The important part is that initial shake, shake, shake. And then once the egg sets on the bottom, go ahead and start basting. And you see how this yolk kind of broke? That doesn't freak me out. I still would eat this. Um, you know, if you're going for like perfection, feel free to do another one, but I'm all about real life, man. Like I'm not stressed out that this is broken because the yolk is still together, as you can see. It's still gonna run beautifully as I smash this over jasmine rice with my spicy beef basil. So with, if it starts to smoke a little much, turn the lower the heat and just literally baste that egg. And that basting again is gonna bring the egg whites over and then kind of encapsulate that beautiful yolk in the middle. Heat's off. Lift that egg up, let the oil drain. Man, I am living dangerously today. Drum roll, guys. Woo! Survive that one. Okay, um, I'm good to go. Fried eggs, good. Uh, my oil's still hot, I'm gonna grab the beef. Two seconds on beef. This is uh, lean, probably five to 10% fat. Whatever your store has is gonna be fine, but if you're lucky enough to have a butcher, um, ask the butcher to grind the meat once in a large die, meaning he or she will push uh, it through a large hole, meaning I want big chunks of ground meat. I'm gonna let the same oil get to smoke point again Mise en place is ready to go. We should always be thinking about order of operations, right? Um, in the wok, I automatically know I'm gonna go to aromatics first, and the aromatics here are gonna be garlic. Wok is smoking, yes, no, we agree? Yeah, it is. So just at that first wisp of white smoke. Now I'm gonna go chili. Warn your family that chili in the wok could get uh, a little, um, how shall we say, the vapors uh, are going to uh, kind of get to those that are sensitive. So uh, if you know what I mean, if you're in a, a enclosed small kitchen, open a window, turn on your fan, fry that up. Now, I want this pan screaming at this point because I'm gonna put the beef in. So what I'm gonna do now uh, is put the beef in. Now the beef is coming out of the refrigerator, right? So we know it's like 40 degrees. It's gonna cool down this pan quite a bit. So what I want you to do is use the surface area of the wok, really. Flatten out your protein. Turn over and just make one nice thin layer so you can get as much beef as possible uh, sticking to that really screaming hot pan. And just leave it alone for a second because I really want to take advantage of uh, searing this beef up. This is great beef, by the way. Uh, look at the color. It's beautiful, dark, rich red. 
There are no gray spots to it. Um, and it's not leaching a lot of moisture. Uh, this is a really great quality beef. All right, so you turn it over again. And again, use the surface area of the wok. I want to cook this about halfway, meaning I want the exterior to be seared brown, um, but not overcooked because I want some moisture in there. Now, I've got bells and onions. I do want to put my onions in now. So as you can see, uh, this beef has uh, a little bit of residual liquid in there. And all that is, family, is uh, water that's in the actual beef, which is totally normal. So I'm gonna just drain that off. Perfect. All right, liquid drained off. I'll get rid of that. Now it's time for the bell peppers. And if you are a chili head, feel free to sub out serranos for Thai chilies. And now I'm gonna do uh, the sauce. Make sure to give it a stir to get all those components together. And what really makes Thai basil beef pop is the basil. I'm using Thai basil. Smells like uh, black licorice or anise. And I'm just kind of roughly tearing the leaves. I'm not really being very ginger with it because I like the stems. I want them to kind of sear up in the wok. And I'm gonna do my final toss. And I just want to wilt these leaves. I want all of those flavors to come together. Those residual sugars that were in that sweet soy, they're gonna caramelize. And if you can't toss the pan, don't. Don't make a big old mess in the house. But if you are comfortable, um, go for it. All right, lastly, I've got a beautiful glaze in the pan. Uh, it's looking super delicious. I want you to finish with just a little white pepper. That's gonna give you a little layer of heat and aromatic. Let's do one final toss. I eat these stems, but if you don't dig them, just get rid of them. So the only way to know how delicious this dish is, is to taste it. I can't tell you how important it is to taste your food before you serve it to your guest. You're really looking for a balance of savoriness, sweetness, kind of all that herbaceousness of the basil, placed perfectly with the sweetness of those bell peppers. I'm ready to plate. Let me clear up a little bit here. Oh, yeah. You have no idea how excited the entire crew is every time we get to this stage. Uh, so remember, I made spicy basil beef, but there's no reason it can't be any of your favorite proteins, including uh, tofu. So one egg, two eggs. I wouldn't mind giving that a little hit of pepper. <laughs> and so there you have it, uh, spicy basil beef stir fry with a fried egg, by the way. Mm. It's beefy, it's sweet. It's basil, it's everything I wanna eat all the time. It's been really fun cooking together with you. Now go eat this, have fun, and I'll see you next time.